In this video, we're going to show you how to install fuel injectors on your Jeep Grand Cherokee located on both sides of the engine. We remove our ground terminal here. We're going to use a 13 millimeter on the nut side and a 13 millimeter on the bolt head side. Go ahead and loosen that. Give that a wiggle. Pull that off and set it aside. Using your flathead screwdriver, I'm going to loosen the hose clamps on the air intake tube. Go ahead and loosen and remove this tube now. On the back side of our air box here, between our throttle body and the box, there's gonna be a clamp or a hose clamp. Loosen that. Now on both sides of our air box here, there's gonna be a bolt underneath here, securing this here. Let's go ahead and use your 10 millimeter socket and ratchet to loosen and remove this. And once you remove this one here, Go ahead and repeat for the other side. Here's the other one over here. Once we have the lower bolts out, we'll go ahead and pop this vacuum hose off the side. Lift up on the air box and gently pull towards you. And you're separating the rubber O-ring from the throttle body. Go ahead and set this aside. Now along the top here, we have four ignition coils on the passenger side. Want to disconnect all the electrical connectors going to these here. You're going to press down on the tab on the top and go ahead and work that off. Sometimes they're stuck, so you end up using a pair of pliers. You don't want to crack the plastic, so gently do this if you're using pliers. Okay. We have these all disconnected now. We have a connector right here. We'll also want to go ahead and separate as well. So press down on that tab, do the same here. On this fuel rail over here, there is a little black screw cap. Now we're gonna unscrew this here. And what this is, this gives us access to a Schrader valve for our fuel pressure and our fuel rail. And once you remove this cap here, you wanna go ahead and set that aside. Now the next step is put safety glasses on. Super important. What we're gonna do is we're going to tuck some towels down underneath here, underneath our fuel rail. And in the center of this valve is gonna be a little pin. This is a fuel pressure release here, or this is where you can test your fuel pressure. Now our vehicle has not been running in a little bit, so there probably is no pressure, but what you wanna do is press in on this little spring-loaded pin right in the center. If you have fuel pressure, it is going to spray out of there. Safety glasses, make sure you have a towel to go ahead and kind of shield, press that in, let that fuel pressure come out until there's no pressure left. Once that fuel pressure is released, you can now go ahead and pull your towels out. And then take your ignition coil wire, line that up and push that on. You're gonna hear those click in. I'm gonna continue that process all the way down. Now we're gonna go ahead and disconnect our fuel line here from the fuel rail. And there's a little metal clip here. I'm gonna push this up. Release that lock. I'm going to use our fuel line disconnect tool here. 
Now, when you're doing something like this here, even though we depressurize the system, there will probably still be fuel in here. So wear safety glasses. And what we're gonna do is this tool pushes up and releases the internal lock on this fuel line. I like to put a rag underneath to catch any residual gas in case there's any more pressure in there. have the line separated. I'm going to just tuck that with a rag to catch any residual fuel there. Now going to each injector, there's four injectors, one, two, three, four. There is a wiring harness that goes to it and there's a red lock tab on that there. Now sometimes you can use your finger to undo that and slide that out. I'm going to use a pick. There it is. I just pushed up on that clip. I actually popped it out. We can always push that back in. Now, right where the red clip was, there's a spring tab you're gonna push in with your finger. You're gonna pinch it and pull that connector off. And there it is. You're gonna do the same for the other three on this side here. Now, this process is gonna be identical for the other side of the engine. Now, on each fuel rail, which is one on each side, there are two eight millimeter bolts. There's one here and one further back. Let's go ahead and loosen and remove this one. the same for the back one. Now, before we pull the injectors here, it's ideal if you can get that as clean as possible to do this. You can use compressed air and blow this out. You can use a vacuum, whatever you need to do, but you want to clean this out. You don't want debris to fall down inside the ejector ports when we pull this up and out. Now, we already previously used compressed air to clean this, so go ahead and take care of that. The next step we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of spray solvent and I'm gonna spray it on each of the injector ports Now each injector is held onto the fuel log or rail by a retaining clip. I'm just going to use a flathead screwdriver and gently come on on the back side here and just gently twist this. You can see that coming off there. Now at this point we can go ahead and grab that injector and we're going to push that down and out of the fuel rail. Now sometimes these can be stuck, so you can use a pair of hose pliers if you have them. Get around that injector. We're gonna push down. I'm gonna go ahead and separate that. Now there's a rubber O-ring in here holding that in place. There we go. And you can see we have some residual fuel coming out of that rail, not a big issue, but here is the injector. And the key things you wanna pay attention to is when you pull it out, there is an O-ring on the top as well as the bottom. If you don't have an, uh, an O-ring on either end, it's either stuck in the rail up top or it's stuck down in the engine. Simple, you wanna just grab a pick or a small flathead screwdriver and go ahead and pull out that O-ring. Now you're gonna notice on our injector itself, it is split all the way up the side. And this is the reason for replacing these here. Now you would repeat this process all the way down the other three. Now to install the new injector, ideally what we can do is put our injector down into the engine area. And I'm going to spray the base of the injector with a little bit of solvent and then push this down into place.
The next thing we want to do is line up the injector with the fuel rail. I'll we'll have to go ahead and spray the O-rings on the injectors themselves. Line it up with the fuel rail and push that fuel rail back down in a position. Sometimes you could use the butt end of the rubber mallet and just kind of tap this down. Next thing you want to do is inspect all of the injectors, make sure that they're fully seated. And you're going to notice that the tabs on the fuel log or the rail are sitting flush on the top of the, on the top of the intake itself. And once you can confirm that all the injectors are seated properly, We'll install the retainer clip. Push that on, you're gonna feel it snap into place. There we go. Push that on. Now let's install our two eight millimeter bolts on that fuel rail. I'm just gonna go ahead and get these bolts started. Just a couple threads. Then we'll go ahead and zip those down. Go to the back one. go. I'll go ahead and snug down that back one. Just gently snug that down into place. Do the same for the front one. You can go ahead and install your injector harness. Get lined up, push that on. Once you feel that injector harness lock into place, don't forget to push your red lock tab down to secure that on. You can feel that click into place. You can grab your fuel line here, line that up and push it on. You're gonna feel it in here, it snap into place. You're gonna install the two locking tabs inside Fold that over, snap it in, and push it down. That'll lock it into place. Doesn't matter the position of the tail end of it. You can point it back, you can put it underneath this harness. It's not critical as long as this tab or mount or lock is inside the fuel line and is clipped onto the outside here. Take your air intake box, line up the O-ring, onto that throttle body and push that on. And push it down. Now your tabs on the bottom should line up with the bolt hole. Go ahead and install your vacuum port. Install your lower bolts for the air box.
do the same for the other side. Tighten up the hose clamp on the back side where the airbox meets the throttle body. Install the air intake tube here. Tighten down the hose clamps. Install the negative battery cable. Make sure it goes down all the way. You use a 13 millimeter wrench to hold the head side of the battery bolt. And let's go ahead and snug this down. And you're all set. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.